Well, you know we've got our 435 F32 project car and it's time to start actually digging into this thing. And one of the first things we do on a car like this where we're really gonna tear into it is make sure we have a super solid baseline before we tear all the interior out, all the things out, just to make sure we don't incur any problems that, well, maybe when we pulled that part out, we induced that problem. Gonna do some things like scan the codes, do an ABS test in the parking lot, make sure the ABS all functions. Gonna do a baseline dyno to make sure everything functions properly. Uh, you know, James did drive this thing a good bit, drove it for, I don't know, a month or so, drove it back from uh, the dealership in Raleigh. So we know that everything works fairly well. So I'm gonna go ahead and give this thing a pretty good once over, you know, this is different than a post-purchase or pre-purchase, post-purchase or pre-purchase inspection, where we're not super concerned about bushings, ball joints, wheel bearings, maintenance, things like that, because we know we're going to address a lot of that throughout this project. That's just general maintenance. However, we want to know what kind of problems we may be getting into, and do we need to resolve those before we tear into it, or hit them later. So anyways, let's start diving in. Gonna start with scanning the codes first and then just kind of give this thing a general once over to see what we got going on. <clears throat> so uh, who's got the key for this thing? This is helpful. How long do you think it'll take to get a dipstick figured out for this thing? Uh, not long, we've actually done it already and the M235IRs also uh, came with a dipstick solution that is not the most inexpensive thing. So we may come up with something that's a little bit more cost effective, but dipstick solutions are out there in existence and uh, we've actually already done one on one of these street cars. Connect to the car and then it turns the ignition off. Now it's turning it back on and entering diagnostic mode. Bring. You know, on the dipstick note, we also have to code that kind of stuff out so that the car ECU isn't always looking for that dipstick. Otherwise you get the alarms on the dash, on the iDrive screen that can be kind of obnoxious. There's gonna be a various number of things that we're gonna have to work on, making a list of things that we have to code out. You know, part of this process is gonna be, you know, unplugging the seats, going and driving it and see what it does. Unplugging the door motors, uh, window motors, seeing how that does and going to drive it and sunroof motor, you know, whatever, all kinds of stuff in here that we'll need to unplug and see how the car functions without coding. Kind of want to see if everything still works properly or if it gets stuck in a limp mode with those things unplugged or if it's just nuisance alarms and everything still works okay. Um, obviously the cleaner solution will be to code it all out so that you don't have all the alarms and whatnot on the dash. Going to go ahead and do a quick scan which is going to take a few minutes because it's going to go through all of the modules on the car but we want to know what all of the modules on this thing are saying. We got these codes read uh, and first before I do anything else I'm actually going to save this and I'm going to email it to myself. We've got front electronic module, four faults, driver's door, over voltage, multifunction steering wheel, something in the clock spring, I guess. Deactivation of terminal 15, startability limit reached. That's because we just ran this out of battery, so we're getting a battery charge on it right now, actually. All right, none of that stuff matters for race car stuff. DME, DME is the one that I'm mostly interested in. Differential pressure sensor, tank vent valve, signal permanently stuck. I'm gonna confirm what that means. But something with the diff, we're gonna be changing the diff in this thing anyways. I don't think an issue, but we're also gonna go through a couple of running tests, and make sure everything functions properly. So we'll confirm that. Uh, transmission, no faults, amazing. Uh, fuel pump module, no faults. Gear lever, gear lever switch, no faults. DSC. Power steering, no faults. Integrated chassis management, four faults. Let's see what we got. Cruise control seems like the deal there. Uh, I'm gonna say cruise control does not matter for a race car, unless you wanna have a little challenge and 
see if you can just cruise control who's gonna who's gonna be the fastest around the track on a certain cruise setting. But once again, want to make sure that it doesn't actually cause any running issues with the car. Uh, EDC, crash safety, no dice, but those are getting pulled out of the car anyways. Central gateway module, that's all the locking system stuff. A couple of faults there, but once again, that's something that's going to get ripped out. Brake light, left and right faulty, turn indicator faulty. I do want to make sure the brake lights work. So we're going to check and see if the brake lights are actually functioning. Yeah. I see him. All right, so we got brake lights. Uh, turn indicator, rear left faulty. It's clicking. Yep. All good. All right. HVAC stuff, couple of faults. Don't care about that either, but I'm curious what they are. Blower output, over voltage or under voltage? Just told me to charge the battery again. Is the charger hooked up back there? That looks like the original battery in this. This thing will definitely be getting an Optima battery too. And by original, that probably means it's like 10 plus years old. Dang. Built February of 14. That means that's probably a battery older than February of 14. And right now it is March of 24, over 10 years. So everything here actually looks pretty good. There are a couple things I wanna check a little bit more. I wanna know about that DME code of the differential just to make sure that's not anything weird that's gonna cause any problems, but everything else looks pretty much unrelated to anything race car related and probably gonna have a number of faults in here as we dive in and pull stuff out. So I feel pretty good about what we're looking at so far. I'm also gonna go ahead and clear all these codes out. Some of these may have been sitting here stored for a long time. And when we run the car a little bit on the road and run it on the dyno, see what comes back. Some common leaky areas are oil filter housing gasket, whether it's here or against the, the block, charge pipes gonna need to get a dressing. You know, that's general maintenance stuff that you'll wanna hit at some point, but once again, race car, we're gonna replace all that stuff anyways. But also it won't surprise me if we put this thing on the dyno and that charge pipe breaks. We do have a little bit of some oil leak at the oil filter housing gasket just as I suspected, but really not bad. And I'll tell you that leak can sometimes make its way to the belt, make the belt wear out. Uh, and then it ends up, the belt breaks, slips, goes behind the harmonic balancer. And then you end up getting that belt sucked into the front crankshaft seal. So we also have a crank guard to help avoid that issue. Uh, the valve cover gasket looks surprisingly clean. Oh more evidence of the oil filter housing gasket leak right up under there. Cool and looking right. Guessing this thing was parked under a tree for part of its life. All right, well, we definitely have some oil leakiness as I see a nice little amount producing from right there. Oil pan gasket looking like the culprit from what I can see here, but we'll pop this cover down and see what we got. Hey Rich, you busy? Diff looks good, axles look good. Uh, but you know, once again, a lot of this stuff is gonna get replaced during the process. So really what I'm looking for are big type issues, which I don't see any, you know, one of the big ones that I'm always looking for when I'm looking under a car that we're about to build is, what's the rust story? Are we gonna have rust that we have to clean up? And sometimes if you've got a really rusty car, you're just gonna keep chasing your tail throughout the entire time of owning that car. But this thing's looking super clean under here. Minus the oil leak that we're gonna get a better look at in just a moment as Rich has got that front off. Looks like this that's dripping back here. Oh, yes just came from the front, um, but the transmission itself looks super dry. Uh, yeah, that oil pan gasket, oh gross. Look at it right here. Wow. So we know we're doing an oil pan gasket on this thing, because yeah, it's dry up top above it, which 
is kind of okay. One thing we want to also look at on this car is the rod bearings. So we'll pop the oil pan gasket off, check the rod bearings. You know, these modern turbo engine cars, they see a lot of force against the rod bearings. So we'll want to go ahead and take a peek. You also don't know when you're buying a used car what the history is of it. You know, if we owned the car from day one and had redline fluids in it from the start and knew that we were warming the car up in cold months or any time before getting on the car, probably feel pretty good about the rod bearings. However, we don't know what the history is on this thing, so these rod bearings could potentially be a little bit toast. <laughs> so I think a lot of this is from the oil filter housing gasket. It's possible there's a front main seal leak, but I don't know if you're gonna be able to see that. That's from the oil filter housing gasket. Yeah. It's possible there's some from the main seal. There's definitely an oil pan gasket leak. But really looking under this thing, oh, yep, we definitely got a leaky shock over here. You can see that thing is uh, oh, yeah. worn out. So see if the other side's got some stuff in it. This side, it's starting to leak, but not as bad as the other side. So some things to address. Really, it's leakiness of the engine variety. But everything else looks pretty good. No, no big red flags. Get this thing down. You'll see we got the scales out. I would like to get a baseline weight before we pull the interior out. I don't know if there's really a big purpose for it other than just to kind of be like, huh, that's how much weight we pulled out. What's your guess? Uh, I don't really know, so I'm gonna go 32.5. Rich, what's your guess on weight on this thing? 35.80. What's your guess? For the car? Yeah. Uh, 30. He's overthinking it. Oh, he's gonna come walk <laughs> over here. It's a stock F32, what's it weigh? Uh, with the sunroof. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is classic John right now. Uh, I'm shocked John didn't say how much fuel does it have. And I'm shocked nobody actually asked me how much fuel it had. It it's very low on fuel. Range said 28 miles, which tells me this thing has about a gallon in it. 3596. I'm gonna give Rich at 3580 a round of applause. 3596, it's not light. I'm not sure what we're going to try to target this thing in race trim once everything gets out, but now we know what our baseline is. I'm gonna guess we wanna target with driver, 32, 31 would be awesome. We'll see. All right, the next test was to see how ABS works and make sure ABS works because in a modern race car, Modern ABS is pretty awesome. If you go to like a really old car, okay, maybe you can get into not using ABS. But ABS works, everything's functioning. Now the next function test, before we tear into this thing, dyno. So let's go pick this thing in the dyno room and strap it down. All right, so first thing before we dyno this, also just to make sure that it works properly, is to check the engine oil level Looks like we're at max, we're all good. I've actually seen these things where it doesn't read properly and man, you're gonna have a problem if you don't know if you have oil in this thing or not. We will be coming up with a dipstick solution for this as we mentioned earlier, but for right now, the electronic system is what we got. Looks like we're good for oil, so let's dine to this thing. All right, so we got three pulls done. We actually just had our friends from Grassroots Motorsports here, which was nice to get a little bit of a different baseline. They made about four or five more horsepower and foot pounds of torque than us. They were right at 300, 300, were 296, 295. But on that very last run, it went poof, and I lost all power. And I can give you one guess as to what it is I haven't even looked in here yet, but I'm willing to bet, because everything still ran okay, I'm willing to bet it was a charge pipe. 
Sure enough, that plastic charge pipe that I think I even mentioned that earlier that I'm not sure if it would make it through the dyno runs. So that's the common theme with these things, sort of the nemesis, the crux, the whatever. Sure enough, it popped on the dyno. But also, we got our baseline test done before that popped, which means we know that this thing, health-wise, is pretty good. We knew that charge pipe was probably gonna be a thing, and we knew we were gonna change that at some point, sooner than later. Now, obviously, way sooner than later. So next up is to start tearing apart the interior of this thing and start unplugging bits piece by piece. Do one thing, go drive the car, see what it does. Do another thing, go drive the car, see what it does. Stay tuned to see more of this project as we continue to dive in and tear it apart, turn this F32 into a race car. Well, you saw in the dyna we busted the charge pipe as I kind of expected. So Austin, with Mr. Sienna Rot Beard, is starting to take this charge pipe out. Actually, I say starting, he's already almost done. So that we can replace with some Evolution Raceworks aluminum charge pipes to give us a solution that is gonna be much longer lasting than, than that factory BMW plastic. Oh, here we go, here we go, here we go. Get that right twist. I gotta hold the AC compressor up. Is this really a two person job right now? I'm doing something. Hey! A real mechanic. Wow. Yeah. So broke apart here. This is where they normally break apart that this big C clip goes here and where it secures that plastic just bloop. So here. Did that break? What's that? Mm -hmm. Oh. For it. Oh. Hey, that did break. Uh, and you can see this is a big one piece thing where it's got a route under the AC compressor and over to the intercooler, the Evolution Racework system, two piece. So the install will go a little bit easier maybe help Austin out a little bit on the install process. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I was filming you. So far so good. We've oh, got done. there's a pipe in there now. Yep, everything's pretty much connected. I'm sure I've gotten some Dave audio. That ain't me. He's a Keebler Elf thing. Come here, let me give you a hug. We are trying to pry stuff apart. We're starting the process of unplugging some things. So right now we've got the seats unplugged. I'm gonna go drive this and see what happens. Then we're gonna unplug the door cables. Then we're gonna unplug the iDrive module. Maybe then unplug this. We're gonna do this in iterations to see if the car still functions, what kind of issues we run into, just so we know as we're unplugging stuff, as this thing becomes a race car, what kind of problems we might have. Easy there, oh boy. Yeah, we're, we're gonna unplug that in a minute too. <laughs> Driver restraint system fault, not surprised, but we'll see if it causes any other issues. I love that that light is just dangling. <laughs> Step one complete. Nothing but nuisance alarms. I uh, can still shift, go to red line, go to whatever. Yeah, we're all good. Unplug my doors. Okay. You wanna scan it first? Or? Nah. I hope I have enough gas to keep doing this. These shocks are really blown. So 
that still worked. I was a little bit concerned that undoing the doors wouldn't let it get out of neutral because sometimes with these cars, when you open the door, it throws it back into neutral, but maybe because it's not connected at all, it's like, oh, well, maybe something else is wrong. Um, so I got an alarm on the dash that said, make sure car is, I don't know, what, what did it say? Oh, secure vehicle against rolling. So basically it thinks that the doors are open because the doors are not hooked up. But it still worked, everything worked well. Uh, DSC off worked, still went through good RPM. Let's unplug some more stuff. Let's unplug this stuff up top. Is this one gonna cause problems? All right, so now I've got no signal on the iDrive. So maybe that one caused more problems than I wanted it to. Where's that module? All right, we've definitely upset the iDrive. What do you need iDrive? I don't know that we need it, but it might be nice to have for certain things. Okay. Like TPMS if it works, but I'm not sure it works. Well, I guess now it's just you drive. <laughs> <laughs> you drive? Oh, yeah. man. Still good. Still uh, I, cycled the, I cycled the ignition down there and everything was good. Uh, my gas gauge has gone to bars and I'm now under the zero mark. Do we have any 93 we can put in this thing? Might have some old 100. I feel like we need just like a little bit at least. Just Three gallons should be plenty. Uh, so we're gonna unplug hood sensors now. Um, oh, as I'm looking at Dave to pop the hood and I'm the one, I'm the one that has to pop the hood. Apparently, in one of the other cars, if you unplug the hood sensors that make it think that the hood's open, the car wouldn't move. Oh. So I'm just trying to figure out what all is required to make the car run, what's not. There's only one on this. Hey, we're still moving. I'm gonna drive this one one more lap to see if this dinging goes away. It keeps dinging at me. Yeah. We unplugged the hood sensors that know if the hood is open or closed and it was dinging like crazy, telling me I'm gonna cause an accident because the hood's open. It went away after probably two miles. I'm gonna put it in park and try to drive again, see if it comes back. Yeah, it's back. All right. Next test, undid the rain sensing sensor up here. See what that does. All right, we're still good. Nice. The next test, what is the next test? Oh, the iDrive little control thing. Gonna see what that does. Hood's still open. Yeah, hood's still open. I just need a pick to push in right there. Oh, I just needed a Dave. Well, everything still works. I just can't change anything on the iDrive. I think we'll want to be able to use the iDrive function. So we'll probably retain that, come up with a little mount for the module that's there, but Realistically, everything still works. Cruise control still works. Radio still works. Wipers still work. Just throwing a lot of alarms at me that are pretty annoying. So we're gonna work on a list of things that we have to get coded out. Still a ways to go as we get this thing fully stripped out and get the rest of the things like HVAC, maybe unplug the iDrive entirely, see, see what other modules we need to unplug and see what kind of problems we'd run into. But pretty good for a phase one of this.
Now time to get it loaded in the trailer to go get the roll bar jig created. Getting the jig created for that, for that uh, bolt-in roll bar solution so that we have that to offer from JP Marketing. And then when it gets back, we'll hit phase two of unplugging more stuff. Stay tuned for more on this project. And the best way to do that, hit that subscribe button. Also leave us a comment, hit that like button and follow for more content. You ready to go? Should be an awesome crazy weekend. We are ready to kill it this year. It's good. It's gonna be a wild ride.